next up, our next speaker's very specific vendor. Um, it's a speaker from Aronet, and they are providing uh, different types of sensors and measurement tools, temperature, air quality, light, or any other physical parameter. And we are going to hear about how this integrates or interacts with Zabbix in their specific environment. So let's welcome from Riga, Latvia, Tuoms Rekšnja, Marketing and Business Development Director at Aeronet Latvia. Welcome. Hi, uh, my name is Tuoms Rekšnja. I'm the uh, Marketing Director of Aeronet, and I'm very delighted to be here at the Zabbix Summit. As uh, Aeronet has recently partnered up with Zabbix, uh, I would like to explain a little bit about what is Aronet and what is our, our wireless IoT solution. So my uh, presentation will contain three parts. So I'm going to talk about firstly about what is Aronet, about the wireless technology. And then I'm going to go into a little bit of a detail of two application cases. So let's start off. So Aronet is actually manufactured by Softechnica, and uh, Softechnica is a company uh, with 20 uh, more years of uh, experience in the telecom industry in uh, radio equipment manufacturing. And if you want to learn more about that, a colleague of mine is also presenting here at the uh, Zabbix Summit. Uh, her name is Tatiana Donce. Uh, w regarding the soft uh, microwave radio applications. So, but essentially uh, what I want to focus on today is the third product group, our newest product group, which is uh, Aronet uh, wireless uh, sensors and the Internet of Things. So, uh, what is Aronet? So, essentially, uh, Aronet is a, a wireless sensor network. You have a base station and sensors, that uh, transmit uh, the data uh, to one another uh, over the 868 megahertz frequency in uh, Europe and 920 uh, in the United States. So sensors for measuring different um, environmental parameters. And this uh, frequency allows us to have a very large line of sight distance between the uh, sensor and the base station. So up to uh, three kilometers line of sight and you know up to a couple of hundred meters indoors. So uh, these uh, you can connect, connect up to 100 sensors per base station and they can be configured to send the data in different intervals. So once every minute, once every two minutes, once every five minutes or once every 10 minutes. And these sensors, they are super power efficient. So with a double, uh, with, just, with just a regular AA battery, they will last up to 10 years. So um, essentially the RNA technology is based on the uh, LoRa physical layer, but we have built our own uh, proprietary LP1 protocol uh, on top of it. So to kind of, um, let's say, uh, make the uh, radio uh, parameters better and also to, to increase the battery life. Uh, the kind of brain of the whole system is the Aronet Pro base station that comes uh, with an inbuilt server that houses um, its software. So that means that you can connect directly to the base station with your PC, laptop, um, or your uh, phone, and you don't need to install any software. You just connect it like you would to any other uh, mobile router or just any other router, and just open up your browser and you're inside of the software. So, and that comes with you know um, a lot of a lot of features like graphing, exporting data, um, things like that. And of course, if we look globally at the RNet architecture, so we have the sensors that are sending the data to the base station, as shown before, and then uh, several base stations can be uh, agglomerated into a uh, cloud solution. So uh, the cloud solution is the one that you know takes the data from several base stations, um, and it allows to you to access the data from anywhere uh, you want. And this brings us to kind of the uh, philosophy of 
RNET, RNET business philosophy. So what we do is that with having this background of the 20 plus years in radio manufacturing, we truly believe that we've created one of the best in class uh, systems out there in terms of uh, wireless uh, connectivity. So we build the systems, we build the base station, we have the in-house cloud, but we realize that that does not end there. So what we are looking for and the way that we are going forward is we're looking for strategic partnerships where the RNet system uh, can become a part of a larger system. And thus, uh, this also brings us to the uh, partnership with Zabbix, where we have where Zabbix has integrated the RNet cloud solution into their own system. So the Zabbix can act as a monitoring system, whereas the cloud can be left for uh, monitoring these things, right? So now let's jump into uh, some of the applications of RNet. Some there are a lot of examples. I'm just going to list a few of them. So one uh, quite interesting is retail. So we've been active in retail and a, a nice case study that I can present is the Remy case study, which is a, a chain of Latvian supermarkets where uh, 100, where 6,500 uh, sensors have been installed in 125 shops and we're planning to expand also in, 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 in the other Baltic states. So this is primarily used for temperature monitoring in freezers. So beforehand, they had to do things manually. Um, so somebody had to walk around with a legal pad and, and, and check the temperature, whether or not it's all working properly to report to, you know, uh, the relevant government agencies and all of that. So as a first step, RNet allows to automate all of that. Uh, of course, in the case of something malfunctioning, that means that uh, an alarm can be sent and you know uh, product spoilages can be avoided and what we're working on uh, together with them is also a machine learning al algorithm for predictive maintenance to actually uh, predict uh, find anomalies in the temperature and other parameter data of the freezers to predict uh, that the fridge is going to break down before it actually does so that uh, brings a lot of you know benefits so um, having this wireless system allows them to cover even the largest supermarkets with just one base station. And as I already said, you know, the um, data, um, the manual data collection can be avoided. Also, uh, they managed to reduce uh, their freezer uh, temperature operational costs. So 20% reduction in, in energy costs, avoid product spoilages, and of course, also the fact that quite often, um, if a fridge breaks, uh, there's water on the floor, somebody walks and slips, and that can result into quite costly litigation fees. So that also can be avoided. Uh, bringing us to the next kind of interesting application of RNet is uh, in line with the uh, the new uh, COVID disease and the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. Essentially, a lot of a lot of um, government agencies, a lot of health agencies now have uh, changed their advice, um, including the Center for Disease Control in United States states and they now state that uh, COVID can be transmitted also through aerosols and uh, that means aerosols are these small droplets that are being released when we cough when we sneeze when we talk and because they are so small they're about five microns in size they linger in the air up to ten, nine minutes and even more so that means if somebody infected has been in a room uh, has talked there has you know sneezed there and then he or she leaves you can come in and you don't even have to be in contact with this person to actually catch the disease so this actually um, says that you know you have to have these um, vent proper ventilation practices in place and actually proper ventilation can decrease up to tenfold uh, this uh, the spread of uh, of the of the disease via aerosol route so 
Uh, one way you can control for that is actually having pr proper ventilation and uh, reading the CO2 values in the room. So CO2 is a gas that we breathe out and um, rec now they recommend 60 cubic meters per, per person per hour. Uh, of air exchange, meaning that results to about 800 parts per million uh, of CO2 concentration, which is roughly double that of outside. And this is where RNET also comes into useful. Uh, so we have this uh, wireless uh, CO2 sensor that also measures temperature, relative humidity, and air pressure. It comes with a, um, a useful Bluetooth app which allows you to get uh, your you know, latest readings and things like that. But the most important thing is that it has these, um, it, it has these alerts. So whenever you know, the, this, 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 this level goes above the critical, uh, it gives you either a visual indication, which is um, the, the, the display with uh, the green, yellow, or uh, red, or uh, an audible kind of sound to let you know that this, uh, this, 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 you have to manually increase the ventilation by opening windows and all of that. So that's really gaining popularity in the latest, uh, in the latest months, especially in schools and universities, but also in offices and places that you know don't are not sure about you know their air exchange. So this can be very helpful, essentially. Um, and as, as, as with all RNET products, also this one can be, uh, networked. So it's a simple plug and play setup with the, um, RNET base station. Uh, you get, you know, all of the data on each of the device and centrally. So you can, uh, follow, for example, in a uh, large office space or a school building, you know, you can see where are the problematic spaces where you need to ventilate more or less. And essentially, this is kind of the perfect solution for controlling airborne COVID-19 spread. Um, of course, I could go on and on about different applications. So here I just list a few of them. So it's also uh, horticulture, so industrial greenhouses, building management, warehousing, pharmaceuticals, data centers, also some uh, medical uh, kind of applications. So essentially, this kind of brings me uh, to uh, this uh, this this idea, this this um, which, which I already mentioned in the beforehand, that uh, RNet is essentially looking for uh, integration and distribution partners. So if you think that any sort of uh, wireless monitoring could be useful for either your business or your business customers, you can. Uh, reach out to me directly, or you can find uh, all of the details on our website, which is rnet.com. And to leave you, I kind of want to um, end on a little bit of a philosophical note. Um, this is a saying by uh, William Thompson, or more commonly known as uh, Lord Kelvin. And in the uh, beginning of the 1900s, he said that you can only improve what you can measure. And this is kind of the core value of the RNET system to uh, create these measurements in the most easiest, the most straightforward way possible so you can improve whatever you would like to improve. So that is it for my presentation. Thank you for your attention and bye. And thank you. Um, so question time. Are you ready, Toms? Yes, hopefully I can be heard well and uh... yes, you we can hear you just fine. Yes, and see you also. Um, okay, so first question is of course. So you've discussed your RNA devices um, in quite a lot of detail, but how do you see it? Is there some way or some benefit to integrating these with Zabbix, like purely theoretical? How would you go about that? Maybe give us some use cases. Uh, yeah, so as I already said, the, the applications of, uh, of the RNET system uh, is, is, are very, you know, diverse as, as well as, you know, the, the partners that are using Zabbix are as well quite, quite diverse. So adding, Zabbix exists as a monitoring solution, so adding 
uh, on top, not, uh, not only network parameters, but also physical parameters as such would, you know, really help out. So we, we're talking about, you know, uh, data centers or we're talking about, you know, retail and all of that. So including alarms, not only about uh, something that, you know, goes wrong with your network, but actually that something physical has happened. So it's be become too hot or things like that. So, so this would be like in a, in a high level kind of mm -hmm. answer. Yeah, so adding kind of our, our physical uh, metrics on top of IT infrastructure to just monitor our environment, not just from the IT standpoint, but also, you know, from, from many other kind of viewpoints that you described in your presentation, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of more questions about RNA devices. There is quite a lot of interest in those. Um, so is it possible to switch your sensors to uh, lower a van? so we can use existing networks. I'm not sure about that protocol. It's L-O-R-R-A. Yes, LoRa, LoRa yeah. 1, LoRa yeah. 1. So we have decided to, um, to have our own proprietary network. So it is based on the LoRa physical layer, uh, but the, um, the, the software on top of it, the communication software is uh, essentially our own proprietary. And this decision has been made for several things. First of all, it's ease of use because uh, and this is the main thing that our customers actually value is that you know you go in with an rnet system it takes you a couple of minutes to set it up you just lay the sensors and it just works whereas with lora one quite often you have to you know you have a base station from one provider you have uh, sensors from others it takes time for you to you know to, to to kind of make the whole system to work together so this one works uh, out of out of the box. Also, um, things like improved battery uh, because of the the way that we've made the improved battery time because of the way that we've made the protocol, and also kind of a uh, additional security, right? So you kind of with us you control the whole ecosystem from base station to sensors, and there's no uh, dependence on one party's you know software on top of that. Are some other sensors then you have these with laura one you have these issues with password management so you have to make the sensors and base stations talk to each other and sometimes for the sensors you can even find you know passwords on some online forums and all of that really kind of you know puts it together in in, in a uh, lot easier to use scenario if we just have this this one protocol where we can control the whole e ecosystem Mm -hmm. So I guess at, at the end of the day, it's more of a homogenized environment versus heterogeneous one, where homogenous one yeah. is a bit easier to manage and maybe even monitor if we're talking about Zabbix. Ex exactly. And it is your own private network, right? So so wherever you're interested in, in doing your own private network, this would be kind of the, the right solution. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. And one more question. Uh, are there any electrical sensors, vaults, amps, power, anything like that? Uh, we can uh, monitor voltage, right? So, but these are more uh, for third-party integration uh, integration sensors, right? Uh, we have pulse output sensors, which you can connect to um, these electricity meters, and that can be monitored. So, so there are ways of monitoring that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Tom. This will be all. And once again, I assume that you will hang out in our chats, uh, in our Q&A sections, and this is where people can reach out to you. And of course, you left your email in your presentation. That's another way yeah. where they can reach you and discuss maybe some of your products or integrations or things like that. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot.